Hello, my name is Eric Putkinen. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm talking about you alone are the universe. Originally I was going to call this Brahman is the universe, but it's really the same thing. <laughs> now, first of all, I want to say that the universe could be, you know, is something that exists. It's not something that will disappear after awakening. And I know that classically in Advaita Vedanta through Shankara, the, the classic teaching is Brahman alone is real. The universe is illusion, not real. And there are some teachers, including me, they'll say, no, the universe is real or say, you know, the, Brahman is the universe. And uh, so some people might ask, well, why, you know, which is true? This very same question was asked of Ramana Maharshi um, in the talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi, uh, talk 33. Somebody asked, they said the exact same thing. Shankara says the world's illusory and other, other teachers say the world is real, which, which is true. And our answers are basically the same. It depends on where the person is that you're talking to. It's the context. If you're talking to a, a fairly new spiritual seeker or someone that's very attached to the universe, that, you know, the world, they think that this is it. This, this, this is um, reality. <laughs> <laughs> something that you can cling on to and grasp. Then the, it is the typical way, pointer to say the world is illusory. Ramana said this, this is inevitable. This is what you tell early spiritual seekers. The world is illusory. Because you need to point out the impermanence of the world, the, the ever-changingness of the world, that all forms are are, are temporary. And so in, in this way, you're trying to point the seeker to that which is not impermanent. You're trying to point them to seek out the self or Brahman. Now, when the self is realized, that which has been denied or rejected, is brought back in as part of unity. Ramana Maharshi said the same in that talk of uh, 33. And in this way, it's a lot like what happens when you're talking to uh, someone who's very attached to the body, for example, and they identify with the body. I am the body. You would tell them, you are not the body. Because <laughs> you're trying to get them to, to, to give up the identification and attachment to the body so that way they might be able to see who and what they really are, what the real nature of reality is, instead of just caught up in the thought and belief that I am the body and believing the thoughts. But in Advaita, in non-duality, all bodies are not other than self. And so when the truth is realized, when self-realization happens, you realize, oh, this body is part of the totality. And so you are that. And so it depends on the context of who you're speaking with in regards to where they are in potential understanding. Because you would not tell a beginner you are you are not just the body because what will happen is they will try to to build upon their understanding and knowledge based on the premise that they are this body and they'll just try to expand um, the parameters and that will never work <laughs> that illusory me never grows to encompass infinity it never happens that me is is inherently with borders, that me is inherently 
finite and as such it can never touch the infinite. But what you need to do is to diminish the me, negate the me. It's when the me is eliminated that the infinity remains. And you realize that that is Brahman, that is self. And so you wouldn't tell a beginner you aren't just the body and have them build from there. No, the, the, the basic teaching is you are not the body. That's the classic among many schools of non-duality and classical Advaita Vedanta. You are not the body. This is the teaching. That's the way it's got to be. But when realization happens, you realize the body too is part of the totality, part of oneness. And this is, like I said, very similar to the the world is illusory. You need to you need, you're trying to negate those attachments and those identifications. So that way, the truth behind it all might be realized. And so when Brahman is realized, you realize the universe too is Brahman. It's not that the universe disappears. I see this from time to time online and various spiritual forms, this myth and belief that when the true awakening happens, the universe disappears because it's just an illusion. It doesn't disappear. <laughs> Some teachers might even say it disappears, but I think depending on who said it, it might be due to the context of what they were trying to say at that point in time. And what I mean by that is, I think even Ramana Maharshi at one time said the universe is an illusion. Um, and when there's, when the me disappears, the universe disappears. I think he said something to that effect. But that's context. Because Ramana himself said, when the self is realized, you realize the universe is Brahman. The universe as Brahman is what is realized. <laughs> Ramana said this too, so it's it's interesting that some people try to nitpick and say, well, it says here, you know, Ramana said, you know, everything disappears. Yeah, I can point somewhere else and say the universe as Brahman is what he also said. But Ramana changed what he was saying depending on who he was talking to. It matters in context. And so the universe is not something that disappears. Fundamentally, because the universe is energy. Let's take this from a scientific point of view. The universe is fundamentally energy. And as we've, as science has, you know, discovered and proven, energy cannot be created or destroyed. <laughs> so, the, so the energy that is will always be. And so the forms may change but there's always that energy. And so that won't disappear. It's not like the energy disappears. <laughs> there will always be something. It's never a nothing. And so don't think that enlightenment or realization is an escape, a way to get out of this world. It's that it's something other than this. This will all disappear when realization happens. That doesn't happen. For both me and Ramana Maharshi, the universe as Brahman is the ultimate truth. Brahman alone exists. The universe is not other than that. When the self is realized, the universe too is within part of that oneness, within that unity. But when you, depending on who you're talking to, you might need to start out with. The universe is an illusion. You are not the body. These are the pointers. These are the necessary pointers for the teaching. And so, at times I'll say the universe is Brahman. But a lot of times I'll say this as a counterpoint to the people that are talking about the world disappearing after realization. And we go, well, no, the the world is Brahman. The, the, world, the world doesn't disappear. They've taken the beginning 
the beginning teaching and think that's that's the entirety <laughs> without realizing Brahman without realizing self they're they're just assuming that if they get it the universal universe will disappear but the universe never disappears and so they're always convinced they haven't got it yet <laughs> quite a conundrum quite a pickle they got themselves in and so as Brahman you know, the universe as Brahman and in classical Advaita Atman and Brahman are the same. Atman is not other than Brahman. Aham Brahman is me. I am Brahman. Tatvamasi. These are all the same pointers to the same thing. And so the self is Brahman. And as there is no other than Brahman, Brahman alone exists and there is no other, there's no otherness in non-duality. And so that's how you get to you alone because there's no other, <laughs> are the universe. And that's, that's what kind of started this talk, was delving into, I guess, a little bit of what it means, but in particular, negating the idea that the universe somehow doesn't exist or somehow disappears after enlightenment, which is not the case. But anyways, if you got any questions, comments, please post below. But until next time, thank you much.